best magazine locations of World War II. During the Second World War, millions of men clashed in a titanic struggle upon which the fate of the world rested. Even before war broke out, nations poured considerable resources into weapons development in an attempt to give their soldiers an advantage in the coming conflict. Firearm designs were given significant attention. Of particular interest was the ammunition feeding mechanism of the firearms that would be issued to their troops. In the conflict, the majority of soldiers were equipped with bolt-action rifles, which generally fed from internal magazines. Likewise, the semi-automatic M1 Garand issued to American GIs had a similar system, using clips that were held internally. A myriad of machine guns were fed using belts of ammunition, such as the legendary German MG42, the American M1919 30 caliber Browning, or on strips like the Japanese Type 92 heavy machine gun. While these types of firearms were highly successful, there was a need for more portable firepower, and an increasing number of troops were equipped with automatic and semi-automatic guns, many of which were fed from detachable box magazines. Continually experimenting for optimal performance, the location of these magazines could vary greatly from underneath the weapon, from the top of the gun, or jutting out from the side. Each had its own advantages and disadvantages which were tested out in the field of combat. Easily the most common location for a detachable magazine was the underside of the weapon. Firearms that used this design were numerous and included the German MP40, the American Browning automatic rifle and Thompson submachine gun, the Soviet PPSH-41, and many, many others. Ergonomically, this was the most efficient when the user was standing, kneeling, or moving. A magazine could be changed while still maintaining a sight picture on an enemy. Furthermore, the magazine is out of the way of the sight, which is most ideally located along the top of the firearm, leaving a clear sight picture. Reloading is also aided by gravity. Once the magazine release is pressed, the empty magazine could simply fall out, ready for a replacement, though the soldier would have to remember to pick it up for reuse later. This also means that the weapon is well balanced, with an inline center of gravity, further aiding accurate shooting. While most firearms are made with right-handed shooters in mind, as empty shell casings are ejected from the right side of the weapon, it can be used by a left-handed shooter more efficiently than a side-mounted magazine. Ever thought of swapping your rush hour traffic for the thrill of World War II battles? Well, don't worry. No time machines needed here. Introducing enlisted comrades. This isn't just any old World War II shooter. Think large-scale combat, authentic historic campaigns, your own squad of fighters, an arsenal of vehicles and a multitude of weapons. It's like stepping right into a history documentary. Only you're in control here. Personally, I can't resist a good dogfight. Taking to the skies and turning the tide of battle is just too good. The best part? This thrill ride is free to play on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X or S, PS4, and Xbox One. Plus, they've got cross-platform support. Click the link below and you'll receive a free bonus, three days of premium time, and several orders for troops and weapons. Quite the welcome, huh? Displacement does have drawbacks, however. In order to feed properly, the new rounds are fighting against gravity, and as such, the springs and feed mechanisms must be strong enough to overcome this force, though with proper manufacturing, this is a relatively minor issue. The larger problem is found while firing prone. From this position, a long magazine may rest on the ground. In a worst-case scenario, this could create pressure on the magazine, bending it out of shape and causing jams. The magazine may also drag on the ground, balancing awkwardly, throwing off the user's aim. This can be remedied by holding the weapon higher off the surface, but this exposes the user to return fire. Some weapons, like the Browning automatic rifle, overcame this issue by sacrificing ammunition capacity, carrying a mere 20 rounds, not the most efficient for protracted firefights. Finally, underside magazine placement may encourage users to grip the magazine while firing, a particular issue with shorter weapons like submachine guns a problem exacerbated by the very far forward placement of the magazine, such as on the German MP40. This creates unstable handling of the weapon compared to using the front grip, which is usually further down the length of the weapon, hampering stability. Depending on the quality of the manufacturing, grabbing the magazine may also lead to jams and other feeding issues, if the magazines are poorly made. In some cases, this may even cause the user to inadvertently pull the magazine from the gun while it is firing, though this is exceedingly rare and can be mitigated by proper manufacturing methods. This issue can also be overcome with proper training to prevent soldiers from handling their weapon in such a way. In spite of these limitations, underside-mounted ammunition magazines are far and away the most common location, something which persists to this day in the overwhelming majority of magazine-fed firearms. Another idea that was implemented was the complete opposite, placing the magazine on top of the weapon. 
Machine guns such as the British Bren gun, the Australian Owen gun, and the Japanese Type 96 all use this type of feed location. The first advantage of a top-mounted magazine is when used in the prone position. This allows the user to lie completely on the ground and fire effectively while the magazine is conveniently out of the way. With the magazine clear of the ground, the amount of ammunition is less restrictive, which means that more firepower can be brought to bear. Changing the magazine from a prone position is much easier than from underneath. The weapon can remain in the same position instead of being twisted sideways while being reloaded. With the ammunition following gravity rather than fighting against it, feeding the weapon as it fires is much easier. One issue faced by users of the Bren gun was a reported lack of concealment, as the large magazine added to the silhouette of the weapon. In spite of the success of many of the weapons that use this setup, there are numerous issues. With the magazine jutting from the top of the gun, the sight picture is hampered, forcing the use of side-mounted sights, which are awkward to use. Furthermore, the advantages in reloading only translate when firing from a prone position. When kneeling, standing, or moving, reloading is much more difficult and inefficient compared to those guns with undermounted magazines. This was a serious liability on the modern battlefield, where mobility is of paramount importance. After the war, the top-mounted magazine design was largely abandoned. It does still exist today, however, in the form of the Belgian-made FNP-90 series. One of the more unusual locations for magazine placement is at the side. This is a very rare configuration, being found in some early examples of German submachine guns such as the MP-18 and MP-28. During the Second World War, the most famous example of a side-mounted magazine was the British Sten gun, but could also be found on the American Johnson M1914 light machine gun and the German FG-42, both of which saw a limited service. The main advantage of a side-mounted magazine is its convenience when firing from a prone position. The magazine is clear of the ground, while the top of the weapon is unobstructed, leaving a clear sight picture. When used as a light machine gun in tandem with an assistant gunner, the weapon can be reloaded quickly and easily while not having to shift the weapon or expose themselves to the enemy. Since it is clear from the ground, ammunition capacity is not limited, and magazines can be of a larger size than their undermounted counterparts. This, however, is where the advantages end. One of the most glaring issues with a side-mounted magazine is the width of the weapon. Instead of a streamlined gun, the weapon now has a large piece of hardware sticking out at an odd angle, something that can easily be caught on narrow openings, limiting utility in tight spaces, a liability in urban environments, which became more and more commonplace locations for combat. The weapon is also awkward, as the weight of the magazine shifts the center of gravity away from the center line of the weapon. This requires the shooter to constantly compensate, an unnecessary distraction in combat. With the side-mounted magazine, there's also no chance that the weapon can be used ambidextrously. While most other firearms are configured for right-handed shooters, lefties can operate them effectively, if a bit awkwardly. These challenges are magnified when using an asymmetrical firearm, making it all but unusable. Due to the challenges of side-mounted magazines, the concept has largely been abandoned in modern times, being used only in the M249 saw. Though normally belt-fed, it does have a magazine well which accepts NATO standard magazines should the situation require it. After being tested in the fires of the most destructive conflict in world history, it is clear that in spite of its limitations, undermounted magazines are much more effective than its top or side-mounted counterparts. While each has its own benefits, these are outweighed by their drawbacks, and for the most part, have largely been left behind. So whether you're a history buff or just enjoy the thrill of a well-coordinated assault, Enlisted has got you covered. Don't forget to use my link in the description to grab your exclusive bonus. See you on the battlefield, soldiers.